Wesley Zineski passed away a few years ago, so I never actually had the pleasure of meeting him. I've only gotten to know him through his collection. I was contacted uh, by a friend of his who happened to be here. She had inherited his materials. She had been going through some of the papers in this box that she had inherited and saw the name Auschwitz, and she realized this is significant and I should really contact the Holocaust Museum. It wasn't until after we received the collection, though, that we realized how significant his story really was. My name is Kira Schuster, and I'm a curator at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. The collection I'm talking about today is the Wesley Zineski collection. The Zizhnevsky family was from Łódź, Poland originally. Via Shlov, who is later known as Wesley, uh, was born in 1924. He was one of two sons who was born to Zygmunt and Janina, who was also known as Yasha. And the family lived in Łódź with extended family. His grandparents lived there as well, and that's where he grew up. The family were members of the Catholic Church. Wesley actually had two prayer books in his collection that were inscribed with important dates and information that were kept for him during the war years by his grandmother. So clearly his religion was also very important to him. Wesley, his mother, and his brother were all active members of the resistance. Wesley's brother was actually arrested and then executed for being involved with the resistance. In 1941, Wesley was arrested and sent to Radagosh prison where he was held for about a week. He was released and then again in February 1942, both Wesley and his mother Yanina were both arrested and sent back to Radagosh prison as well for being active members of the resistance. In the collection, we have a set of seven letters written by Janina from Radagosz prison. And the Polish name for these letters is Grips. And Grips were basically these secret notes that were written often on scraps of paper, small note paper, cigarette wrappers, or pieces of toilet paper that were then smuggled out from the prison. They were often encrypted in some way, either by language or written in code. They didn't have a lot of information. But Janina's seven letters are unique because they are full-length, full-size letters with a lot of information about her concerns, um, her thoughts, her wishes, and what she was experiencing. And she writes a lot about her son, Wesley, um, because she doesn't know where he is at that point. They've been separated from each other. And she writes that, I wish I could give him my food so that he, I knew he was okay and that he had something, which when she had so little really shows the mother's love and concern for her son, uh, that she w would give up everything to make sure that he was all right and he survived. Wesley had also been imprisoned in Radagosh, but in October 1942, he was transferred to the Auschwitz concentration camp. We actually have his Auschwitz registration card in the collection, which is unique because most people did not have these registration cards from the camp. We see copies of them in the International Tracing Service archives, but it's very rare that a prisoner would have his actual registration card and keep it all these years. Janina was also, um, very soon after, also transferred to Auschwitz, but they were in two different parts of the camp. The two of them were able to continue communicating with Janina's mother in Woods, writing her letters, uh, but these were very different from the grips because these were written on official camp stationery and they were written in German and they had to go through the German censors. Included in that group of letters is the last letter, as far as we know, that Janina sent in January 1943 before she passed away. Wesley was transferred to the Buchenwald concentration camp shortly before liberation, and he was liberated in Buchenwald by the American Army in April 1945. He eventually became friends with another survivor uh, who really encouraged Wesley to immigrate to the United States, and he was able to do that in 1947. I suggested that we use Wesley's collection for a curator's corner because of the unique contents of it. He was a Polish Catholic Holocaust survivor, um, and it's an experience that is underrepresented within our collections. We're hoping to and working towards expanding that experience uh, representation in our collection. And his experience was so well documented. A lot of what we know, if not all of what we know about Wesley and his experience, we have learned through our research, and so it presents really a, a different lens to look at the experiences of a survivor, uh, but also the experiences of his mother who did not survive. <laughs>